Now let's actually get to handling the form. So in this scenario, we want to be able to type into the form and we want to be able to click on the button and then reset the timer. So at this moment, if you were trying to type something, it's going to work, but it's actually not being stored anywhere. So one way to solve this problem, because the value that you type to the input, it's not being stored anywhere and we don't really have access to it unless you resort to accessing actual DOM elements and retrieving the value from there. Now this is not really preferable, it's sort of like mixing vanilla JavaScript and React. We want to be following the React guidelines. So one of the ways to approach this problem would be to create a state. Now of course when it comes to state, state um, is a property or, is a, or a characteristic of stateful components and we have a functional component. And like I said, it's fine, it's always good to begin with functional components. It's all right if you want to convert them to class-based components, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's convert date picker to a class, and it's going to extend component, okay? We're just gonna import it in a second. Let's do a named import component. And we're gonna need a render method as always. The render method basically returns a React element that's going to be a representation of the DOM node that needs to be mounted to the actual DOM, okay? And also let's bring the default export to the same line with a class. So it's just going to save a little bit of space and move the date picker from there. And let's save it. This should work just fine. Component is not defined. Did I make a typo? Let's see. Yes, I did make a typo. Let's save it again, let's go back. And this is still functional, no errors so far. This is perfect. Next, like I said, we want to have state here in this component. Now, of course you could do a constructor as you would typically do. And you would also need to pass the props to the super or the parent constructor, you need to use the super keyword. And lastly, after that, you could do this state and you could have your state object. This is fine but I prefer to use the ES7 class properties because it's just gonna save us a little bit of space, a little bit of typing as well. And I think it just looks neater. But in this case, let's do the following. Let's remove the state from the constructor. Let's just add a state property on the class behind the scenes. Like I mentioned before, this is going to be converted to a constructor call. So in this case, let's do a date. And we're going to set it to an empty string for now. Basically, this date is going to be a string representation of the date that you type into the input. Okay, so if I type something, let's say 2018 01, uh, let's do tomorrow 21, today is January 20th. Okay, so that value is going to be stored inside of the state and we'll have access to that value and we'll be able to manipulate that value as well. Next, let's bind that value to the input. Okay. So the way you do this is every input will have a value property. So one thing we could do is, let's say we want to extract that date from the state. Let's use the structure here. I'm gonna do date, give me the date from this state. And of course you could do, you know, for the value you could do this state date. That's fine, but I think we're gonna need to extract some other properties as well in the immediate future. So I'm just gonna use that form with the structuring. And besides, it also looks cool and uses ES6 features, so I'll keep using that. So let's put the date as the value, okay? So for now, there's nothing in there, but let's say if we added a value of, let's say, tomorrow, I save that, this value is going to be in the input box. Now, of course, we get a warning that says there's no on change handler. There's no on change event listener. We're gonna add it in a few seconds so that the warning will be removed. So the next thing we'd like to do is, of course, for now, if you type something to the input, at this point, we can't really type anything to the input. Before, we could do that because the input was not bound to anything. You were typing to the input and it wasn't updating anything or saving anything to the state. But now we actually have a state property, right? That's a date and we actually want it to be nothing by default. So it's gonna be an empty string. But for now, if you type something, it's not going to be updated anywhere and it's not gonna be saved in the state. And to fix that, we obviously need a handler. So whenever you type to the input box, you want to update the state on every character that you type down, on every key that you press on the keyboard, 
you want that change to be affected on this state also. So we're going to need to create an event listener. The way you would do it with React is, of course, you would use inline um, attributes. In this case, we need to have on change handler, like you saw in the DevTools, the wording that we got, it was talking about the on change handler. So in this case, let's actually call a local method. Let's do this handle date change. And we need to create that method also. So let's do exactly that. Let's do console log. The, the thing is, when this method executes or is being invoked, it's also going to receive a special argument that's known as the event object. And let's actually console log that object so you can see what's going on. Let's do, let's type something, okay? Whenever I press on the, you know, keyboard uh, buttons, whenever I type something to the input box, you're gonna see an object here. This is basically the event object. One of the things that it contains is the target, and the target would be the input box. And one of the other values that you're gonna get, one of the other properties you're gonna get on the target object is value. Now let's console log that value. So let's do target value, okay? Let's type something down. Let's do 2018. As you can see in the output here, it basically gives us back the values that we typed. Every time I type something, it's gonna give me an event object that represents the event that happened, the change event, because the input changed, the value of the input changed. So in this case, we get the event object and we are able to access the value on it. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to update the state. So let's do, let's set state. We're gonna provide a new object and we want to update the date, okay? And one thing we could do is we could actually update the date property to the value of the target. Now this is going to be the new value that you just typed to the input box. So let's type something out. And we get an error that says you cannot read property set state of undefined. And we've seen this behavior before. This is happening because the component or the value of this object inside of the component is not bound to the function of handle date change. Now, one thing we could do is, of course, if you go back to the constructor, you could do, inside of the constructor, you could do handle date changed equals handle date changed, and then call the bind method with this keyword, right? So you would do something like this. Inside of the constructor, you would do this method equals this same method, but you would bind the this keyword to it. This is a perfectly fine solution. I'm going to stick to class properties with the ES7 syntax because we've already used them here with the state. So I'm going to convert this to a property and the property would be an arrow function, an anonymous function. And as you know with arrow functions, the arrow functions actually preserve the context of the this keyword. So in this, key, uh, in this case, the this keyword would have the same value as it has inside of the render method, right? Before it was a normal function, a traditional function behind the scenes, and it was actually losing the context of the this keyword. And because the strict mode is enabled by default with this webpack and bowel setup, the value of this inside of handle date change was undefined. And we want the value of this obviously to be the value of the component so that we can call, let's say, let's say set state on it. So we can use the ES7 syntax to have an error function. The error function will keep the context of the this keyword and we're able to call set state inside of that method. So let's try typing something again. There's no error so far, and of course you're not seeing anything, but behind the scenes, if you were to open React Tools, let's go inspect this component. Actually, yeah, let's try and inspect it. There we go, here's the input, here's the date picker, and we have a state that contains that value. If I were to change it, let's say, uh, instead of 20, 21, you see that the value updates, okay? And this is happening because of the set state method back in here. Okay, hope that makes sense. Okay, next, we're setting the state here, but of course, whenever you actually submit the form, whenever you click the button, you want to be able to grab that value of the date and you want to be able to pass it back to index.js, back to the countdown component. Inside of the countdown component, we want to grab that date and we want to basically inject it to the state. Now we're gonna refactor this quite a bit, but for now, let's just finish the date picker so what I want to be able to do here is whenever you click the button, this is going to trigger a submit event. 
In fact, you could have type submit on the button, and this is optional. If you don't include any type, it's going to be submit by default. Another type you also have is type button, and if you have that type, whenever you click on the button, as you can see, there's no page refresh. But if you were to put submit, right, and if you were to click on the button, it's going to do a page refresh. Now, that's not something that's desirable. In fact, if you remove the type itself, it's going to be, like I said, submit by default. The page refresh is still going to happen. We basically want to get rid of that. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another event listener. And this event listener would be on the form element, right? And the event listener is on submit. Okay, so we're going to add a new method as well. Let's do this handle date submit. Let's have a new method here. Okay. And because this is going to be a traditional function behind the scenes, we're not going to be able to have access to this keyword. So I'll just transform this to an arrow function. This is going to be using the, um, the ES7 class properties, as we talked about just a few moments ago. And so here, let's do console log this state date. Okay. So when you submit the form, we're just going to console log the state. And like I said, we also want to prevent the page refresh here, because if I were to click on reset, and uh, even though you click on reset, you, the because of the page refresh, we don't actually see anything in the console. So one thing you could do to fix that is, again, we might have our event object here. And in this case, we want to prevent default. This is basically going to prevent the default behavior of submitting the form and then basically refreshing the page. So if you do that, that's basically going to prevent the default behavior. And if you save it, we also have the date on the state, and this should be able to console log the state to the browser. So let's do 2018.01.21 tomorrow. Let's do reset. And as you can see here, we get the value of the date and the page doesn't get refreshed. So the state is going to be, the state is going to remain the same. Previously, because of the page refresh, we were losing all of the state in the application. We had to recreate the whole application, remount it to the DOM, and the state was lost, like I said. So in this case, no page refresh, the state is saved, and we can continue working with the form.